before we even go near GFI, there are a couple of things that we need to sort out on the exchange box insofar as we need to enable journaling. To do that, we're going to need to create a user with a mailbox to perform the journaling function. So on Exchange Management Console, go down to your mailboxes, new mailbox. So user mailbox, it can be a new user, unless you've got an existing one. And just so we know what it is, I'm going to call this user journal. Give it a sensible logon name and password. Next. I'll accept the defaults next. Next. New. Finish. Now that's my user and mailbox created. To enabling journaling, you can do it in one of two places. If you go up to organization configuration and select mailbox, you can set it on a mailbox database by database like so. Go to the properties, maintenance tab, journal recipient and select the user that you've just created. Now, I'm not going to do it this way I'm going to create a journal rule so I'm just going to cancel out of there. Now if you go down to uh, hub transport rule you will see there's a tab for journal rules. If you right click there create new journal rule I'm going to give the rule a name and then I'm going to assign it to the user that I created earlier. Now, journal rules like this are a little bit more granular in so far as you can set different scopes. I'm going to leave it a global. You can have it just for internal mail or for mail that's only coming in and out externally. And this requires the Exchange Enterprise Cal as opposed to the journaling we looked at originally. Now the best way to test that journaling is actually working is to send an email and a copy should get sent to the journal user. So I'm just going to log into Outlook Web Access. If I log in as the domain administrator send an email to that windswept and interesting engineer uh, just call it test and click send. Now if journaling is working what should have happened is even though I sent that to the Pete Long user he should have taken a copy and put a copy in the journal user easiest way to test that is to simply log on to Outlook Web Access as the journal user and all being well there should be a copy in that user's inbox and there it is test email from administrator to pay long and attached is a copy of the actual message as well so we know journaling works Now if we dive across onto the server that is going to be our GFI server, there are a couple of things you need to do before you install. The first one is to install the map CDO objects for Exchange. You only need to do this if the GFI server is not going to be on the Exchange box. There's the download link. Now I've already downloaded a copy and I've got it on a shared directory so I'll just extract that to my desktop and install job done I don't need that folder anymore so I'll delete that
Now, it isn't a prerequisite, however, I like to turn off the IE Enhanced Security because it tends to fight with the Mail Archiver Management Console, which runs in IE. So I'm just going to disable that to make my life easier, and I'm going to run the installer. There is the 32 and a 64 bit installer. Exchange 2003 is still supported. Simply click next. These are the server prerequisites. It needs IIS and it needs loads of other bits about an IIS, .NET, SAP and Windows Authentication, which are all um, IIS bolt ons but thankfully if you just click install components it will put all these dependencies prerequisites on for you. And this does take quite some time. Uh, this might be an opportune time if you're following on to pause the video and go and have a cup of coffee because this does take a while. For the sake of the video I've sped it up dramatically. Next No, I don't need to check for a new build, I've only downloaded this in the last couple of days, so I'm simply going to click next. Accept the end user license agreement. Next. I'm going to accept the default. Accept the defaults again. And click install. Again, I've sped this up. And when you click finish, it will launch the GFI Mail Archiver management console. Launch it in IE and it will authenticate as the logged on user. All being well it should say congratulations and we click on configure. Next. Paste in your license key and click the verify button just blank that out so you can't read my license key and click next ok now we're going to set up the database now I'm going to use the uh, fiber database that comes with it as you can see it's really only for evaluation purposes 2,500 uh, mils a day and 50 mailboxes is uh, is the limit so unless well, very small, you're going to need to want to be thinking about putting SQL in. There's a few um, settings and file paths for the database. I'm just going to enable a user to log on to that UNC path. For the purpose, I'm just going to use the domain administrator account. Next, have a quick review. Next, it's blended. Next, okay. I'm going to select auto archiving of all emails. You can use rule based archiving if you so wish, but for the purpose of this, I'm just going to have all emails auto archived. Now remember I manually created my journal user earlier so I'm going to select manual next. Now if you were to use uh, IMAP to connect to your um, journal user you just simply put in the FQDN of your exchange server in the top box there. However I'm going to use Exchange Web Services AWS And I'm going to su uh, supply the logon details for my journal user. Supply his password and click next. And hopefully it should connect successfully. It does. Next. And finish. And that's my mail archiver basically set up and ready to run. In the next video I'm going to run through the connector and importing and exporting data. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us www.
peatnutlife.com.